Uh, again, to see how we, it turns anything out. that we drop that you want ongoing after obviously you pick it up at the clearance prices and everything, we'll special order. Um, GLLO is another one of those things. Um, you know, happy to special order. You know, we can special order any of the colors. We just ask that you uh, help us meet that minimum quantity. Yeah. You know, there's a couple rodeo sizes we're dropping. Cause there's, there's hundred dollars each. Hundred dollars each. Yeah. There's just, you know, when it comes to Rodeo and Claire Fontaine, there's just so many similar products that just didn't make sense to carry it. And I think that's part of why the sales were so spread out, and it made it hard to to carry everything. Is there's just too many similar. We gave too many options, too many similar things. And, oh, and the other reason is the more products we have, the website gets clogged up and it gets harder to navigate, harder to find what you're looking for. Oh, that reminds me, our website. Yeah. Speaking of finding things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our yeah, comparison yeah. feature. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, it's like such an afterthought now. Well, we still a lot of people in viewing, so that's good. Yeah, no, and it's recorded, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just barely after 10. Um, well, I don't want to keep it going too long because we got a lot of stuff oh, to do still. Um, there's now a comparison feature on our site. Um, this is really cool. Our, our host provided this a couple weeks ago. So if you're looking at, like, a category and you know you see the different products, there's a little checkbox. You can compare side-by-side -side three products at a time. So it shows the picture. It shows the description. Um, you know, the price and even, like, how many stars the review does. Um, still doesn't work randomly. Shoot me an email, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what's going on. There's some, there's some, uh... There's a, a couple little bugs. There's some quirks to the way that it works that may be confusing. Well, it's, it's brand new, and I suspect there's still a couple bugs. But, uh, um, so it's pretty cool. And I've, I've tried to format all of, like, the mm. paper, at least the paper, and I'm going to work through the pens, all the descriptions, so you can compare it be like, Hey, you know, this is seven millimeter lines. This is eight millimeter lines. Okay, that's a difference. Or this is this many pages, or this many pages. Um, so I think, especially for paper, it's going to be helpful. And then once I update all the descriptions for pens, it'll be helpful too. Ink, not so much. I mean, it's like, what are you really comparing? Unless we start getting into like our ratings of saturation and shading and stuff like that. But that's so subjective. Yeah. Um, want some help in creating some option-based products? For example, choose Rodeo Top Staples on Notebook, then choose A5, Line, Gold, mm. Black. Hmm. Maybe. We're not looking to overhaul the website right now. But. Okay. Um, within the product itself. Shoot us an email. Explain further what you mm. mean by that. I think yeah. I, I, think I, I get it. Oh, rather than one product for each option. You know what? I used to have it set up that way. So you would go to, like, Rodeo A5, and then you'd have, like, all the, you know, black line, orange line, black graph, line graph, all the options in there. The problem was, because of the infrastructure, the website behind the scenes, we could not use wish lists or mobile shopping. Mm -hmm. um, and even the email went back in stock was a little weird. So there's certain functionality that we couldn't use. And, and the product comparison wouldn't work either. Right. Um, certain functionality we couldn't get. And that's just a limitation of our um, our website. Um, so It's a little overwhelming with all the new pens. Maybe she can consolidate all the similar pens instead of having a picture for every single color nib. Um, for some of the pens, we have to sell them separately by the nib because they're not interchangeable or things like that. But the ones that are interchangeable, I do have them rolled up by the color. Hmm. But again, that's the same thing. If I had them in one in in one product, um, we could not do wish lists. We could not do the mobile shopping, all those features like that. And the way it links the inventory and things like that. I agree. It's a little overwhelming, um, especially if you go to like new products. There's like four pages of new products, and they're all pretty similar. But, um, you know, if you know what you're looking for, you go, okay, I want to go to Pilot. I'm going to look at Vanishing Points. You know, then you can see all the different colors. And, you know, we work, we work hard on the pictures. I want to show them off a little bit. Absolutely. And it, I'm glad you guys like the pictures because uh, I'm taking all those pictures right now. And usually I end up taking those pictures between 11 at night and 3 o'clock in the morning. So I'm like, ah, Habanas. I'm, like pulling, I'm like pulling late night hours to take those pictures. In fact... I have some that I need to take tonight after this broadcast ends. Oh, yeah, we got the, so, uh, the Raiden um, vanishing point in. Oh, yeah, we we're going to show the Raiden. Oh, um, we still got this to cover, too? Oh, oh my gosh. Dang, we right, have like, so much stuff. Okay. Um, so that's the Habanas. The new Ivory ones are ready very, very, very soon. I don't know exactly what day. I'm hoping the next week um, or two. Um, and once we get them in, we will compare the two. So definitely um, 
they're, they're coming soon. Any new diamonds mm -hmm. coming out? Not to my knowledge. I have not heard anything. Mm -hmm. Then again, last time they came out with 10 new colors, we found out from like a blogger or like on FPN before we even heard from our distributor. So, wow, yeah. that doesn't even like hold a candle to how it looks in person. Yeah, the webcam really kind of kills this one. It looks amazing in person. It looks awesome. It looks real awesome. Like, there's a reason it's as expensive as it is. Will we stock any mechanical pencils? I don't think so. Um, we'll special order them, but we don't. We honestly don't where, have. Where do we even? We've tried carrying even roller balls, and we can't like throw them at people because they're so disinterested. We have like a purely fountain pen crowd. There's the Raiden. It's kind of cool, right? How much more expensive? Um, a bit. It's a. Uh, I think we're selling it for like three or. Five, something like it that. lists for like three ninety or something like that. Uh, it's real expensive. I can't remember. We pretty yeah, much sell all the higher end. It's not just like a different material. It's like a whole. It's like a Japanese technique. It's like eleven layers of. Oh yeah, I mean there's there's like Avalon oh the Newler's roller ball is a here. different story. Newler's roller ball sells really well, and the difference is it takes fountain penning. Um, we were talking more about like ball points that were just like regular ball point refills. Those do yeah. not sell well because we have a very good fountain pen following. More specifically, we have a fountain pen ink lover following. Which is so funny because we built this business on rollerball pens. I made rollerball yeah, pens. Yeah, but we do not have the same customers from no, rollerball pens well, we do now. The, there's not the, well, we haven't found the same passion behind rollerball users as there are for fountain pen we're users. We're selling the Raiden for 304. At least not with our crowd. The, the Raiden list for 380. We're selling it for 304. Um, yeah, but it, it's it's all the layering. It's a whole big process. I don't even know all the details. That's that's one of the things I need to take pictures of. It doesn't even look anything like in real life on the webcam. It doesn't do it justice. But you it's used to have that passion. Really so cool you looking. Found us. Oh, passion for roller balls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we killed your passion oh, for no. roller balls. Oh, like, why okay. are you here if you don't have passion? <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, cover this okay. real quick. One more thing we got to do. Um, yeah, we'll maybe do a video, video for the reading. Don't worry. Yeah, we and will. new pictures and everything. We will. Um, there other options. Sorry, I'm trying to get the questions answered. Yeah. Are there other options for rollerballs that take fountain pen ink? Um, I heard there's a Visconti one, but it's incredible. The Visconti expensive. Eco Roller is about $140. Yeah, the new is, is. A replacement tip for a Visconti Eco Roller, I think, is $15. Oh my gosh, that's more than the entire new pen. Yeah. New is. In fact, I'm pretty sure bad. I'm pretty sure Nathan came out with the new Roller Rollerball to combat probably the, the, the ego roller because he, he he really gets off on on uh coming out with better good products for really really cheap okay so you guys are probably familiar with the uh the private reserve the cartridge filling unit comes with the two syringes and it's good for uh um filling you know ink cartridges or getting the last little bit out ten dollars okay the last little bit out of a you know an ink bottle or whatever else so we decided to um Source, source it out and uh, come up with our own little kit. Well, we actually improved on it a little bit, we think. A little bit. So now we have our own ink syringes. Um, there's a couple of things that I like better about these ones. Um, first of all, they're bigger. They hold about twice as much ink as the other ones. So if you're using them not just for filling ink cartridges, but if you're using for like ink mixing or filling a sample vial to send to someone else or filling your own sample vials or whatever. Um, they hold um, just over six milliliters of ink. We call them the five milliliter, but I realized that it's actually six. After you printed up everything that says five yep. mil. Yep, yep. So, <laughs> oh well. Um, another thing I like about it yeah, is... Yeah, good it's, for eyedropper fillers. It's, yes, yeah. it's good for eyedropper fillers. It'll hold a lot of ink. Um, the needle itself kind of stores right in the, the syringe which is really convenient, and I like that a lot. And also, it operates much smoother. Um, and, the, you know, it really doesn't take nearly as much force as the other one. And it's, um, it's larger, so it's a little easier to use. It's easier to handle. Um, the needle itself is a little longer. I don't know if that really matters too much, but if you want to get down into an ink cartridge without having to worry about spilling and or stuff like that. Or getting the last little bit out of an ink bottle. Or, or using it to clean out your ink cartridge. Yeah, getting the last drops out of a bottle. Exactly. Exactly. There you go. How difficult are they to clean to change ink colors? Not hard at all. You can pull the syringe out of the back and you can just flush water straight through it. That's all it is. So, um, and then you stick it back and these, in there. We're selling them for a dollar cheaper than the Pratt Reserve ones. The Pratt Reserve yep. ones I put on clearance. Um, um, 
because we're sourcing these out separately. Yep, five bucks a pair. Four ninety five. Four ninety five a pair. There you go. There you go. So, you know, we source these out. I'd wanted to do this for a long time. You got the blue baby wax cleaner today, the little bulb syringe that works amazing. Oh, yeah. It's great. Oh, yes, it is a dull point needle. It is not a sharp point. It's a 20-gauge needle, so it'll fit in any of your ink cartridges. You need to buy it just for the sound effect. Oh, the little pop? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's a blunt tip needle. Um, now, the oh, only we're going to have a heroin crowd in addition to our No, 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 no. Crowd. No, the only thing I want to say is it says single-use only on it. That's because we source for it from, and from a medical supply company, so for medical use, it's it's single-use only. But the, the needles are blunt. Don't worry. Yeah. You yeah. can't use them for heroin. No, don't worry about that. So... Anyway, those are cool, and I'm excited about those because I've been wanting to source those out for a while. And um, I was They're shooting up AC blue. I was, <laughs> yeah. I was finally able to find something I was really happy with. Um, as far as um, other products come in stock, I mentioned you know the new Rhodia. Will we get more scented ink? Um, not beyond the JR Bond. I'm not aware of anyone who has scented ink besides those. There's a, I think, is it Deatramentis has scented yes, ink? Yes, but we don't carry Deatramentis. Right. Um... As far as any new products coming out, you know, we're working on the Platinum Mix Free. You know, we don't have a timeline, but, you know, um, our distributors are going to Japan and finding out more about those. We'll figure that out. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess whatever new stuff Nathan comes out with, we'll have. Yeah. Um, but I think we're going to cool it on the new brands for We're going to try not to. What we're going to do is we're going to look to. It doesn't mean we're not going to keep carrying stuff within our existing brands. Like, you know, like Sailor Pens or stuff like that. But, yeah. you know. Well, we're gonna we're gonna we've got a a good number of brands, and we haven't even gotten into like Sailor 1911s or Platinum Presidents or you know a lot of these other really nice products within the lines that we carry. You know, Pelican M200s we can carry those. You know, it's like there's so many things that we we could get into uh, to get deeper into the brands we already have. We're not gonna really go chasing after new brands in um, the immediate future. Torto, do you know anything about the R Ivory Rodia stuff? Yes. Um, those are the premium soft touch notebooks that are coming out. It's basically like webby paper in a tablet. So it's they're uh, kind of like the Rhodia top staple bound notepads, but they're with ivory 90 gram paper. So um, that's coming out in blank and lined um, in the number 12, number 16, and number 18 sizes. Um, so those are on our site if you go to the Rhodia, um, the premium soft touch, whatever. That's the R by Rhodia. Um, um, we had somebody asking earlier about, are we going to carry G. La Lo anymore? Yeah, I, I, I answered in here. Oh, we are, they, they keep undergoing price increases and, you know, consequently it's, it's been a slow mover. Um, it's not bad. It's not a bad product. It's just with the quantities. It's not and, selling much. No, it's not selling like it used to. Um, so, circa, so we are we are just, lemon drill, so yeah. we are discontinuing it. You know, however, like we mentioned, you know, we will be happy to do special orders if you want to get like, uh, you know, five at a, I think it's like five at a time um, for any given color. Um, the envelopes come in like ten packs. I think I'd be willing to do five. Ten's kind of bodacious. Even five is a lot. Yeah, but I I don't know how to do it because you know we've done special orders before. You know, and then we're, you know, someone orders one or two, then we're sitting on eight, and it's, they're really difficult to sell, and they take a while, and that's just, you know, money that we could be using for other things, and and frankly, just space we don't have. Um, this is really the space, the space thing. Yeah. Especially with large notebooks and stuff yeah. like that. If if they're not selling, then we can't carry them. I mean, it's just... But again, special orders. You know, it's like, when it comes down to space, it's like, do we want to carry G. La Lo, or do we want to carry 1911s and, you know, more you know, of that kind of stuff, you know, that's really what it's coming down to. We just physically don't have the space to put, put yeah, things Yeah, you know, like parallels have been doing really well, so we need to increase quantities. I need space for it or, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Or, yeah. you know, Sailor comes out with six new colors and yeah. those need a home and whatever yeah. else. You guys are asking about the Levenger Circus, the Circus system. That's a Levenger exclusive thing. Yeah. Um, there is something from Staples called the Arc system. You may want to check that out. I believe it's compatible with the Levenger. I saw it on Fountain Pen Network. Um, a lot of talk about the Sailor nibs and stuff. Um, One could make a special order wish list and only order when the minimum is met. If it doesn't overlive the bookkeeping. Um, I wonder if we could do that. If we could have people order stuff and then if other people, I don't know, that gets to be kind you of mean logistical. Because we yeah, actually don't have people. access to the wish list. 
I'd have to like know who it is and look at their account. I don't have like a role up of all the wishes. We'll we'll look into that and see that that could be something that could have potential, but it could also be something beyond oh, our any programming current capabilities. Oh, any colors are moving close to the clearance aisle. That is one thing. You got some um, stuff on sale right now. Yeah, there's stuff on sale. Some of the slow movers or, or trying to keep or, stuff fresh in yeah, stock. You know? it's stuff that we overstocked on and it didn't sell as quickly. Um, uh, we won't be clearancing any ink unless the brand is like no longer carried. We one thing we care about is even if we don't sell a single bottle of the color, is that we offer the full line. Um, you know, we may only keep one or two bottles in stock at a time of like you know. I don't know, diamond yellow or something that doesn't move as well. But, you know, we want to offer the full line. So you won't see any ink go into clearance. Um, so don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can leverage FPN to do group buys. Absolutely. That would be a really good uh, thing to do. I don't know where it would be appropriate to do it. Maybe under professional services or things like that. Or I don't know. I don't know. I could talk to, to the moderators and see if they can find us a home that it, it, won't get it, kicked out all the time. Well, it may end up being having it may end up having to be the kind of thing like if it's I No, mean, no, shelf life of ink. That that's not an issue. It's more, you know, um we overstocked and you know, yeah, take we're, the space. Yeah, exactly. Like if we have ten you know, I don't know. Ten too many bottles of diamond dark brown, which hardly moves at all. Yeah, shelf life. Of you know. if you keep it in the right light, the right humidity, I mean, it'll last years and years and years. It should, yeah, exactly. But the longer it sits on our shelves, the less it theoretically, the less time it's going to be sitting on your shelf. So we we try to try to try to keep our stock as fresh as we possibly can. That way, you know, any whatever lifespan that there is for the ink, y you guys can take advantage of that instead of us just having it sit on our shelves. Your least favorite um, brown. Yeah, it's not dark. I don't know why they call it dark brown. It's not dark. Yeah. That's probably why it doesn't sell. <laughs> if they <laughs> named it something else, it would probably sell well. It's just a misleading name. Well, they have dark green that's not dark either. Well, Scarlet's pink and Crimson's pink and Diamond is... We're like, is it the English? What is it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so we'll put some of that stuff on sale. And whatnot. Goulet Vintage Inks. <laughs> Is there an expiration date on fountain pen ink? No, not really. Um, no, well, no, there is no expiration date, you know. Um, it, you, but it is if recommended... If you keep it in the heat or if your humidity is off, then, yeah, it could get funky. Yeah, I mean, if you put it in direct sunlight, it's going to break down eventually, you know. Keep it out of direct sunlight, keep it in a reasonable room temperature, and it'll last you years. Years and years and years. Yeah, inventory on shelves is money that is not liquid. Yeah, it's... Yeah, if we got money sitting in ink that's not moving, then I mean, we can't getting, buy pens that everybody Without wants, getting into you know? the accounting, buying inventory, you don't get to deduct that until you actually sell it. So it's basically just cash that we have to put out that's just sitting there. And so, like, yeah, we might be, like, profitable on paper, but our profits are sitting on the shelves. And that stinks. It really stinks. Yeah. Best file our taxes. This did not make me happy. He's asking about, don't reds <laughs> break down faster, supposedly? I don't know. Uh, it depends. It's hard to make a blanket statement about which inks. Um, I think you're, when you say breakdown, you're probably talking about light fastness in terms of, you know, which will fade faster. I think generally speaking, reds fade faster um, in sunlight, but that varies. I can't make a blanket statement too much. Um, yeah. What about artificial light? Um... I do not know. That's a good question. It's a good FPN question. It depends on the UV. Now you're getting into science and chemistry and things like that, <laughs> but they're a little bit beyond my... Generally speaking, it's a good idea to keep your ink out of any type of light. But some of the keep PR, it in a box. Some of the or, PR inks have gone from red to brown. They're older formulations, so who knows? Well, sometimes they reformulate <laughs> inks, too. So if you did your taxes, you're very happy with your return, and we will be in a few weeks, too. Well, that's <laughs> good. Thank you. That's Thank good. you in advance. Um, quick temperature. product placement time. Where's my Gatorade? <laughs> okay, we'll do a quick product placement of Natural Concepts hand sanitizer. Hey, if you get ink <laughs> on your hands and it's still kind of fresh, you look at that. Up. Look how big that is. Isn't that ridiculous? We've had this thing for like, I don't know. No, six, seriously, six months get ink on your finger and use a hand sanitizer that has a little bit of alcohol in it, and it'll get the ink right off. It basic does. blue remover, exactly. It does. It does. Oh, it works remarkably well. Did you do well. something with a bleach recently that got basic blue out, and you're like, hey, this really does work? Yeah, bleach in water, like a 10, 10 to what, 20. What was stained? It wasn't stained. It was just I was cleaning out my pen. Oh, okay. It was a Lamy um, pen, 
and I just wanted to clean it out. There was some day state blue that had that was still in the converter. Uh, and on Rhea, the feed, and I cleaned it out with like a 10% bleach solution. Unfortunately, we don't have polls on Justin TV, but I will verbally ask, and you can type your answer, what's your favorite Easter egg color? One through five. Yeah, for anybody that knows post, what that post, is. Post your, post your favorite. Yeah. Clorox helps wipe out the You know what? I was going to do a poll like that on um, our Facebook page. Maybe I will. Report. Oh, I put a poll up on the Noodlers page about what you think, what you would like the next black swan color to be. So uh, check that out if you're on Facebook mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, like Noodlers. One, two, three, four, and five. <laughs> well, that's good. Glad you're happy. Three, four, five, four. Okay. So of them are growing at number six. So come on. Ah, uh, very funny. You have number five in your vacuum attic now. It's interesting. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it blue. Interesting... I want to see a blue black swan. <laughs> yeah, me too. You think you lost? I don't know. I'll, uh, <laughs> I can let you know if you want. Oh, goodness. You can't figure out number five. Try it in different pens. You know, maybe maybe a swab doesn't work, but maybe you'll figure it out in a pen. I don't know. I'm curious. Uh, I'm like really it. curious to see what happens once we release the names of the colors. What I know. Everybody thinks of it. I know. I think, um, I think a lot of people are going to be really surprised, maybe, at what they actually like. Especially if there's any misconception based on um, brand, brand or, or anything like that. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how it turns out. Yeah, I think so. Especially because most of the guesses. It's funny because I'm going to, when we're going to post the results, um, I'm going to do like a, uh, you know, like a roll up show, like a, it's gonna be a, in like like a, like a pie chart or a, a, a bar graph for each color to show how the guesses distributed, you know, how many people guessed the right one and what the next popular things were. Um, and some of them, like, you know, the correct answer is a minority. And a lot of people are guessing something else that just shows how similar some colors are, or, you know. And what was really cool about this ink drop was, you know, we're in a, we were in a position to do something. <laughs> you compared, I mean, of course, ink. <laughs> Wait, you compared the ink with three other inks you own, and the colors are identical. So if they're different, you don't know what to think. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know what? Some people, I think you're colorblind. Because some of your guesses are way off. Well, no, it, it depends on the pen. It depends on the paper. It depends I on know. whether you're looking at I in know. fluorescent versus in halogen but like lighting. A blue versus a purple. Well, it could also be if someone is comparing it to the swab shop and their monitor is not calibrated and it's all wacky. Maybe. That could be too. I don't know. Some people are way off. <laughs> uh, so your notebook has a large number five blotch and I keep staring at it going, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not fair. We do know what they are. We do. Yep. We're you the guys only are going to have ones. to find out. So next week, next broadcast, we're going to have Nathan on here, and we're going to announce the winners and the results. So it's going to be like a rocking time. You guys better be here live. And if you miss out on Nathan, then, well, you're going to have to watch the recording, obviously. But uh, if you want to ask him any questions or anything like that, stop on in. Yeah, it'll be fun. And the reason we wanted to do it, and you guys were asking earlier in the broadcast about, um, you know, anybody who gets upset about not being told the, the names and stuff and you know that's fine whatever I'm not gonna sweat it too much but looking at it from a much bigger perspective you know who has ever I been I didn't say screw you I said screw it who, who has ever no who has ever been in a position to be able to send out ink to 300 people at a time and have a blind test and just just imagine all of the biases all of the experiences that we have with different ink brands and things like that um, when we're given a blind test we find out we love something that we thought we hated or whatever just think about what that could do for the whole mentality of the writing world as a whole that's mm -hmm. kind of why we wanted to do it it was kind of fun but we also wanted to do kind of a fountain pen social experiment mm -hmm. you know to see because you know, uh, it's 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 really it's really going to be interesting. Yeah, to talking see. about Nathan. So I said five bucks to broadcast with Nathan. So controversial, it doesn't make it to YouTube. Probably not, because all his other videos are on YouTube. Um, imagine if we all some pretty controversial stuff on YouTube. Imagine if we all start pounding our fists when Nathan comes on. Will he hear us? <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's funny. I'll have uh, to get. Someone asked yeah. what a manifold nib is. A manifold for writing. Manifold knife for writing stuff in duplicate or triplicate with carbon paper. Um, that's a good question. I'm not familiar with manifold nibs. 
like headbanging at a concert, pounding one's fist on a table for Nathan. Nathan, <laughs> Nathan. Oh, that's funny. I'm just so flattered that he's going to, you know, be able to carve out some time for us. Yeah. Because he really has, like, no time ever at all. Period. He's, like, such a celebrity in this world, you know? In the, I mean, in the ink world. Yeah. It's pretty cool. He's an interesting guy. Sure, you, you know, sure. I think you guys will be... You'll be surprised, but not to hear that when he talks, he kind of sounds like he does in his videos. I think in his videos, he tends to talk very, oh, I don't know, big picture, I guess. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Nice like, he, he's obviously very well-researched, you know, uh, with everything that he does. And he, he pretty much does everything with intention. Um, but when you talk to him in, in, you know, when you hear him in person on the phone, um it'll be interesting because, you know, he'll be a lot like in his videos because he's not really putting on the front in his videos. He's kind of just being himself. So it'll, it'll be interesting. I have no idea what's going to happen when he's on. Uh, I really don't. You know, who knows? We may we may be able to ask one question and he just goes off with it for 30 minutes. Who knows? Um, but, you know, I think if we if we kind of ask him questions, if we have some kind of a format that we want to try to stick to, he'll respect that. He's but, not approaching retirement. I don't think so. But, Oh, I don't think he's. I don't, I don't think, think he's, he's, he's not that old. I think he's. Um, he's not that old. Maybe early forties, late thirties. I don't really know how old he is. Late thirties, early forties, I think. Yeah, he's not on Facebook. So. Yeah, I don't know. That's not a surprise that he's not on Facebook. No. <laughs> I search every once in a while. Now. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, he is a fascinating guy. That is for sure. Ask him if he could be any kind of ink color. What would he be and why? He would probably I'm be just staple. Like, I don't know. I'm curious to know, like, what inspires him. Like, you know, he keeps coming up with new stuff. Like, where does he get his motivation? Like, what challenges him? Yeah. <laughs> Why I don't is he know. shake so much nervous? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. It may it's, be nervousness from be. shooting the videos. He doesn't seem like the type of person who really likes getting out in front of people all the time. Yeah, I don't think so. I could just be coffee jitters. And a lot of it probably, yeah, is lack of sleep and overwork. Oh, my gosh. I'm he gets, sure. like, four hours of sleep a night. I'm sure. Kind of nuts. Yeah. Yeah, he works hard. I mean, we work hard, but he works harder. All right, we should probably wrap it up. Yep. All right, Brian, good night. So, so okay. Come, in, come next week. We're super excited. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. It'll be interesting. We'll see. Yeah, um, we have no idea what to expect. I, I, maybe we should have him call in, like, 930 so we could cover all the ink drop stuff first. Or have him call yeah, in yeah. first. I, I think what I'll do is I'll call him. Okay. And see, you know, because he'll probably be tied up with stuff and... You know, His we'll polar see. black video, he was in a freezer for like 30 minutes. I don't think I've seen that video. Is that new? Huh. Interesting. Okay. All well, right. anyway, well, we'll go ahead and wrap it up for this it. week. Thanks, everybody. This has been great. You know, Justin TV seems to be working pretty well. I love um, video skipping, but I think... Well, here and there, but, you know, I kind of expect that with the free service... Um, as long as it's working pretty well overall, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, maybe we'll look for a better solution. Maybe we'll get to the point where we can host it ourselves. I don't know. We'll, you know, we'll have to see. But for right now, Justin seems to be working well. So, um, yeah, is there anything else? You're pretty good. Yeah, pretty Pretty much covered everything I wanted to. So, all right, well, i got to go take some pictures tonight. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here. We'll be back again next week. Um, we have Nathan Tardif of Noodler's Pens. Um, and if you uh, have any comments, you know, all the stuff we talked about tonight, uh, you know, any feedback or any, uh, you know, we want to, you know, we talked about our vision of where we see it going, but we would love some feedback from you too, as, you know, especially those who've been yeah. with us for a while, those who are new, you know, your impressions of dealing with us, you know. Definitely. Solidifying, you know, our decision and, you know, or. Well, well what it also means is we're going to be, um, we are still going to be looking into new products and things like that, but we're also going to be diving deeper into the catalog of things that we already carry. Yeah. Looking to rediscover things that we may have glossed over in the past, like, you know, sailor inks and things like that, that just kind of got Sailor pens? Well, sailor inks, sailor pens, things that... We have you know, all the inks. No, I mean revisiting things that we already oh, carry. Oh, like getting to know them. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So... Yeah, um, check out the outlay, the Goulet outlay. There's a lot of stuff Once in there Once it's right gone, now. you know, it's, it's gone. Yeah, there's a lot um, of stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's so, all. Great. Anyway, thanks, everybody, and we will see you next time. Thanks.